What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I am extremely honored humbled privilege today to be joined in my little virtual zoom studio with a legend paul check paul man how are you brother i'm great thank you very much i always giggle when people call me a legend <laughs> i'm a farm boy <laughs> i mean i don't know how else to to, to, to phrase you but uh, as i said like i said it's a it's an honor um you you are almost 60 years old you literally look a day older than not a day older than 30 your physique is still phenomenal. As, as I told you, you know, I was a big fanboy of yours when I was in my 20s. When I asked you, I had no idea what your age was because you can't really tell. When you, told me, when you told me how old you were, I was like, wow, this guy's a fucking machine. Lots right? of Tai Chi, lots of meditation, organic food, good sex. Yeah, that's important. Creativity, painting, healing medicine, yeah. time in nature, and two little kids to keep me very busy how old are your children now my first one's 41 my second one's four and a half and my third one's one and a half i got a one and a half year old girl and a four and a half year old boy and paul jr's 41 and i'm about to be a grandpa in january dude that is amazing man you are an animal Ah. Um, i mean again dude we could go so many different directions with this i mean you've talked to so many different people done so many different podcasts so as i told you you know, I want to go as deep as we metaphysically can and really maybe just relate it to right now, right? So Cheers. You I, thank you. You and I are doing this podcast right now on the 12th of November. And clearly, you know, from a, a matrix third dimensional realm perspective, things are a little strange. Yeah. So, so let me ask you right now, <clears throat> As a person who's extremely aware, two of us are very hyper aware people. We've done, you know, numerous plant medicine sojourns. We've meditated, contemplated, introspected, grounded in nature, done so much, you know, mindful work, inner work, Mm -hmm. walked that path. For the people that are like us, and obviously we are a smaller subset of the population, but there are many of us and there are more and more of us waking up by the day. What is your advice? to those of us who are observing this, hopefully neutrally, what is your advice to them? Well, my advice is first of all, you can never know what the truth is unless you look honestly with an open mind at both sides of any argument or situation. So right now there's a lot of people that are scared to death and social distancing and wearing masks and and believing that there's this very dangerous threat out there but nobody's ever seen it 
all they've ever heard is how many people have it. But interestingly, the standard test is the PCR test, which has been shown through extensive investigation and even interviews with the creator of the test that it is not a reliable test for diagnosing COVID, nor was it intended for diagnostic purposes. Therefore, any mention of anyone having it is an illusion right. because it's based on a test that's been shown to have a range of 65 to 90 percent false positives or negatives right which would be like saying um jay uh how would you like to invest a million dollars in my new business you've got a 65 to 90 percent chance of losing all your money right 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 um so the other thing is that if you look on if you look into who's behind it, such as you should, a great book for anybody, I highly recommend the book Oneness Versus the 1% by Vandana Shiva. She does the best job I've ever seen of dissecting the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Bill Gates, showing who he's in bed with, what his corporations are, how much money he's worth, how much money he invests in the illusion factory, and how absolutely devastating he has been to the country of India and right. the world to the world. Yeah. And how he actually almost made it illegal to eat and process natural food in India. He shut down over 400 small uh, natural oil producers, such as, you know, food oils um, until Vandana Shiva and people could get the government to overthrow it. He's, trying to promote the idea that we can't uh, get by without GM gen genetically modified foods. Mm -hmm. He's uh, been shown through extensive research to have bought off all the major media associations. He has a team that writes all the news media. I've seen documentaries showing exactly the same news reports to the letter right. being shared all over the world. Uh, he stands to make trillions of dollars off the mandatory vaccination. Good luck with that. Uh, investigators have found that he does not wear masks and does not vaccinate his own children. Of course not. And we have to understand that what you see on television, first of all, I tell people, remember the word television actually means tell a vision. Exactly. And we know that the grand majority of what we see on television or screens is make believe. And so he has mastered the illusion of making people believe things. And it's well known in psychology and in the science of brainwashing that when people hear the same message repeatedly, they begin to believe it, whether it's true or not. Right. So if a person you know, personally, like before someone's going to confine me to my home, tell me there's some kind of a real threat out there and make me wear a mask and alter my entire life and threaten my financial stability and every aspect of my life, I'm going to thoroughly investigate before I get caught in any kind of a trap like that. And I spent probably 200 hours investigating, talking to experts, looking at documentaries, listening to top podcasters in the world that have done their own investigations and interviewing experts from all over the world. I've listened to interviews, for example, with the, I forgot the guy's name from Germany, who's in charge of, of uh, the whole section. I believe it's their epidemiology section, but his job is to track viruses worldwide to protect right. Germany. Right. He totally dissected the whole thing and said, look, this actually is a whole pile of misinformation. He said, if you realized how much money is going made by scientists getting grants to have anything to do with testing and researching COVID, he said, this happens all the time. It's really not factual. Um, as I mentioned, the PCR test is not reliable. 
And when you start following the money, it leads back to just a few people. Right. And we've found numerous cases of the CDC and the World Health Organization, right. both of which are heavily in bed with Bill Gates, lying. We've seen documentaries showing undeniably that on TV they were using the same video footage but claiming that it was hospitals that were overwhelmed with COVID cases right. and deaths, right. but it was actually the same piece of footage pretending to be all over the world. I've seen interviews with people that have personally gone out during the throes of this thing when it, when it was supposed to be overwhelming the medical system and every hospital they went to was almost completely empty. They talked to numerous paramedics that said they're hardly seeing any such cases. Right. Uh, it was interesting because right up until recently, if you went to an airport or you went to the hospital, no, no doctors and nurses were wearing masks. Only in the last month have they started doing that. Um, you see meetings of politicians, none of them wearing masks, right? right? Yeah. So the, when you look at both sides of any proposal, argument, threat, whatever, and then you say, okay, now let's put the data on the table. How reliable is this? Who's making money off of this? Right. What's the big plan? Well, having done that, I told the day that this was announced, I turned to, I have two wives. I turned to Penny and Angie and I said, we are now in the throes of the greatest hoax ever played on humanity. Right. This is the biggest threat to our safety and security since the First and Second World War. Right. What's happening, too, is that the military-industrial complex, which needs war to make money and is famous for starting and generating wars and, and working with the CIA to create all sorts of illusions, which has gone on from Vietnam to the Gulf War. The list is long. The more you research all that, even 911 was investigated and found sadly to be very likely to have been an inside job yeah of course right and the same people are involved so military industrial complex so now what they've been able to do is first of all after 911 they implemented the TSA right which 3 days after 911 by the way right and research was done on specifically investigating the TSA asking one question, has it improved air travel safety at all? And the answer was after extensive research, 0% exactly. improvement, but billions and billions of dollars lost and thrown away makeup, food, items, right. stress, and it's classic. I was a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division. It's classic brainwashing. Sure. You create an imaginary threat you create chaos and then you put a carrot in front of their face and say, this is the only way out. Um, I've studied brainwashing and the science of it. I can see all the hallmarks of it right down the pipe. Oh yeah. So when you look at what's going on, if you're gullible and you're too immature to take responsibility for your own life, then you turn your life over to perceived authority figures. Exactly. And so that makes you highly profitable and highly controllable. And so having looked into all this, it leaves me with a great sense of sadness that we have such a large percentage of the world population that can't think for themselves, right. which is mind boggling because some of these people fly jet aircraft and uh, operate in, uh, you know, military machinery and weapons and mm -hmm. uh you know are can, are are people that should be intelligent enough to learn to think for themselves but they're not and so i look at this and i just like this is amazing but at the same time i say this is a great opportunity for the world population to see what happens when you relinquish your right as a citizen to contribute in, to a democracy right. and to use your mind effectively and to investigate and to stand up for what you believe in after you have evidence, uh, enough evidence to be confident that you are making an intelligent decision. But 
we have basically drawn our unconscious, our shadow behaviors forward into manifestation, which began, in my opinion, with the election of Donald Trump. The day that Donald Trump became the president, I, I said, now we've got a real problem on our hand because we have a criminal who's about as mature as a 17-year-old with a heart on and a bottle of beer in each hand running our entire country. And the presidential debates only made that even more obvious than ever. So we're at a point now and the other thing that irritated the hell out of me is while the whole COVID thing was in its throes, two things were going on. They were putting 5G systems in schools, right. elementary schools, right. universities, everywhere. Right. So we have to be suspicious there's a connection there. And Donald Trump was, was taking away the protection on land preserves all over the United States to release them for drilling and fracking. Right. Two things that are extremely destructive that we do not need because we have solar technologies and many, many inventors have come up with technologies for accessing zero point energy, some of which have been executed, some found with suicide notes, and many right. have had their patents stripped. Right. So this has all the hallmarks of a small number of billionaires doing what they always do, creating an economical crisis causing people to lose as much as they can and then buying it up on pennies on the dollar, then reinflating the economy and, and selling it back to you at a high profit. So having studied countless numbers of legitimate experts in medicine, most people have no idea how a virus even functions or what it does. They just no. believe what they're told. But Rudolf Steiner spoke about how viruses are created and why they're created in the environment you know, uh, 120 years ago. Right. And uh, Zach Bush, I don't know if you've listened to him at all. Oh, but yeah, I'm a, very familiar with Zach. Right. So, you know, you got Zach Bush, you got Bruce Lipton. I mean, some of the brightest minds in medicine are telling us the truth. I've seen many, many doctors very upset that any doctor would put COVID on the diagnosis of a death certificate for anyone that didn't actually die that way and, and also right. stating you can't even diagnose it so how could they do that so I've seen several I actually saw a, a film meeting of physicians that got together to try to fight this because it goes against everything medicine stands for you talk about the two guys up in Sac, uh, San, uh, Santa Barbara those two those two doctors no there was a group what I one, one of the I've seen several documentaries and videos but one of them was the group of doctors in New York and there was about when I saw the video, there was probably about 20 of them meeting in a room all to discuss, you know, their frustration with how doctors could be so gullible and, and, and actually go against the whole principles of what medicine is based on. Um, but the long and the short of it is, is really it's, it's uh, I believe the whole thing is an unconscious calling forth of a rite of passage ceremony. In any tribal society, the women's rite of passage was first their menstrual cycle, beginning second giving birth. Right. Giving birth can kill you. Research shows that giving birth is so painful that it would kill most men because right. their nervous systems aren't wired for it. Right. So the women come into the world with their rite of passage already put into their existence. Most native societies had rite of passage ceremonies for young men which were specifically designed to take them to the very edge of their life right so that they had to face death and they had to face adult challenges so that they could become warriors to protect the tribe and protect the hunting territories and make themselves valuable to the tribe and if a man, young man failed that some tribes would kill them because they could not carry non-productive people right Right. Some of them would send them back to be with the women and often make them wear women's clothes for a year right. and let them try again. If they didn't make it, they would kill them after that. We are a society of children who yeah. have turned over our responsibility to government officials, scientists, doctors, uh, politicians, and anybody with a white jacket <laughs> and, and religion. And we have 
not paid attention to what is being done with our tax dollars. For example, when Donald Trump gave that $2 trillion relief fund, people were so excited, oh, I'm going to get this money. I'm like, are you a fool? You think the government's giving you that money? You're right. going to be paying for that with interest. Yeah. Your taxes will go up. They will be getting you every way but Sunday. So there's the level of gullibility right there, thinking, oh, we're getting a handout from the government. We're getting relief. That's just ridiculous. So I believe we've called forth unconsciously a rite of passage ceremony that's going to get to the point where we're realizing people are going to wake up that they're being spied on, their phones, their Alexas, their every electrical right. device is constantly watching them. Right. It's a giant surveillance state. So what's happened is because they can't afford to start a war with over 23 countries with nuclear weapons, research shows there's now enough nuclear weapons active to destroy the planet 179 times over. So what they've done is they've turned the military industrial complex in on itself so that almost every country in the world now has a functional equivalent of an autoimmune infection. The immune system is designed to protect you against an invasive organism. The military and the government are designed to protect you from an invasive um, agency or agent, such as terrorist attacks or, or real threats from other countries. But now because that's too risky, because even the people that would start the wars would end up dying, they've found a way to make it profitable. So they've coupled with people like Google, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, uh, Mac, and they are turned everything into an inner security device so that they can now turn it into a police state. So they're doing exactly to the public what they did with TSA after 911 to make trillions of dollars off this technology to get the taxpayers to pay for it. And Bill Gates is famous for coming up with scams that we all pay for while he goes to the bank on it. So, so obviously I'm in agreement with everything you just said, and you did a really awesome summary, but let me ask you the difficult question and you might not know it's an opinion question. Who is Bill Gates? What is Bill Gates? Is Bill Gates the bloodline of the fallen angels, the Nephilim, the scriptural, the ancient, you know, texts. I mean, who are these people slash beings slash entities that have this, you know, authority to rule over, you know, the majority? I mean, what, what is giving them that power? They don't have the authority. They just have the money. There's an old saying, he, he who has the gold rules. It's been that way for as long as there's been kings and emperors. It's always been that way. If you study the law of one by Ra, which is an excellent Very series. Very yeah. So what they describe, which if you understand the mechanics of consciousness, Edward Edger, a famous psychiatrist and union analyst, defines consciousness as a psychic substance produced not blindly, but in living awareness of opposites. You can't have north without south. You can't right. have male without female. You can't right. be conscious of something without its relative opposite. Mm -hmm. You can't have day without night, hot without cold, etc. So in Law of One, they describe how the souls go through what they call a harvest, which means that we're actually here in soul school learning how to deal with the powers of the creative forces of the universe right but we come here in a three-dimensional world where spirit is tied up in matter which makes it move very slowly right. so that people have a chance for example when adolf hitler tried to take over the world because he has to do it with airplanes and tanks it's a very slow process I'm a skilled remote viewer, astral traveler. Once you start working in these higher dimensions of reality, you create at the speed of thought. Right. So if you are in the astral realm and you can't hold your focus, wherever you think you'll be. Mm -hmm. So metaphysically speaking, for us to graduate into the higher dimensions out of the physical domain, we have to stay in the garden wrapped in flesh and stone where matter is entangled so heavily that allows us to have a chance to react to any perceived threat so that we have a chance to survive. And so really what it 
takes to maintain consciousness is polarity. And as they describe in the law of one, the unit, the galaxy that we're in is weighted 51% toward love. They say there are other galaxies that are weighted toward evil sure. or the negative polarity. Right. But they describe that souls incarnate in this plane specifically to hold up the negative polarity. Interesting. So, so you've got people like Bill Gates, Hitler, uh, Trump, a lot of the politicians, people that really aren't genuinely interested in, in what's best for everybody or the planet. And so we have to have these negative polarities because if things get too flat, we stop growing. And one of the great examples of that is if you study the Bible, Adam and Eve did not know they were naked until they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What is that? The knowledge of good and evil is the knowledge of polarity. Yeah, exactly. Duality. So right. the symbol is they were in a non-dual state, which would be considered biblically unity with God, but they had no self-consciousness or self-awareness because consciousness cannot function without duality. Mind itself requires duality. You can't have self-awareness without a subject. And if I say, Jay, hold up your hand and tell me what you're looking at, what are you going to say? Flesh and bone. You're going to say my hand usually. <laughs> and I'm going to say, well, who's in possession of the hand? And you're going to say I am. And I'm going to say, who is that I? And now you're stuck with the most ancient, most profound metaphysical question there is. Who am I? Well, the reality of it is, is who you are is subject. And your sense of self is an object created by the illusion of the ego. Right. So the point I'm making is you cannot have thought without a subject-object relationship, which requires a duality. So whatever source is, the most commonly used word is God, but whatever source is, steps itself down into a duality so that it can have self-awareness. By definition, God is that for which there is no other. Right. By definition, God is that which needs no other. It has no needs that it cannot fulfill in and of itself. You and I can't do that. We have to eat. We have to drink. We need the help of other people. Someone made your glasses. Someone printed the posters behind you. Someone made your car. Right. So mind has to have these two polarities and if we don't have some kind of strife going on, if you study the history of man, as long as we have recorded history, we have nothing but a long series of cat catastrophes, wars, dot, dot, dot. And every generation has it, right? When I was a kid, it was Vietnam. So sure. I lived through the whole Vietnam era. Then I, was, I joined the military because of the Cuban Missile Crisis. And I really, at that time in my 20s, believed we could be taken over by Russia, which I had no interest in. So I joined the military and signed up to be a paratrooper. And literally about one day before my unit was going to sh get shipped out, the thing came to an end. I was like 24 hours from going into the battlefield. Uh, of the 28 guys on the army boxing team that I was the trainer of, uh, probably 20 of them were in Grenada on the battlefield. Wow. So, the point that I'm making is if you look at history, it's nothing but a series of events like this. Why? Because they generate polarity, which generates consciousness. Pain is the great quickener of consciousness. If people do nothing but sit around and play video games and watch their televisions and their iPhones and their iPads all day, and they think food's just magically always going to be there and everything's going to be hunky-dory, people stop growing. But when your back hurt, you got to figure it out. When you someone tells you you're, you're got congestive heart issues, you better figure it out. You got to th start thinking about diet, lifestyle, relationships, unresolved emotions, past childhood traumas. You have to go into yourself, and every step of the way, you become more conscious of the truth of yourself, of life, of relationships, and that's what consciousness is here to do. The paradox of it is is. God, by definition, can't die. Consciousness is not bound to a physical existence. Consciousness at big C, not our consciousness, we can only be conscious because source is conscious. Right. But big C 
cannot die. So a symbolic representation of what we would call God would be a circle. So where's the beginning and where's the end of a circle? There isn't one. So we have all this pressure on us and this fear that we're going to die. But if you look at what a sine wave is, if you take a circle, split it in half and spin it, so you take the top half to the left and the bottom half to the right, you have a sine wave. Right. And right in the middle of the circle would be a zero point. So the point I'm making, what we call life and death, is like putting names to two halves of a circle, not realizing those are illusions that are part of the process that are necessary for us to engage life with enough awareness to actually grow into a realization of who and what we are. So the deeper function that people like Bill Gates and company are holding up is they're holding the negative polarity. Right. That's what all the people that have been destructive to humanity have done is hold the negative polarity. But we're at the state now where our culture worldwide is so badly fed, so brainwashed and so poorly educated and so distracted that they actually are not engaging the polarity. They're just laying down and going, oh my God, I lost my job. Oh, there's this terrible virus. Oh, everyone's going to die. Oh, what are we going to do? And, 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 and just laying over and playing dead. But, you know, if, if we were in a tribal society and somebody tried to sc uh, scam on us like that, we would immediately go to war with them and say, there's no way you're going to pull that on me. And, and as long as we've been human beings and people infringed upon our rights, our freedoms, and our survivability, we had to handle it yeah. in the way that we could, which was usually either a war first a warning, and then, okay, now we have to go to war. And that's what a rite of passage is for. So we're actually in a situation in the law of one, there's, they, they say that this is a harvest period. That's why people got so freaked out about the end of the Mayan calendar, thought the world was going to come to an end. They thought it was going to end at the year 2000. Right. But what the law of one says is that there's a, a cycle of harvest. Right. And these events come along specifically to bring us into awareness that we have to um, achieve a level of conscious development or you will be recycled back into the same kind of environment. Just like if you don't meet the standards of the grade you're in in school, you get recycled. You, you have to repeat the fifth grade or whatever. Right. So we're, we're actually, as much as I don't like people like Bill Gates, because I, I don't like illusions and I don't like manipulations, lying and cheating, but if you actually look at the planet now, we've got a, a completely rigged banking system, a rigged right. political system, a rigged food system, a rigged education system. Um, Everything. It's all rigged. And it's just, it's, it's full of people that are only thinking about themselves and only thinking about money. And all of this is taking our awareness away from the fact that the oceans are almost dead. Right. The, the, the wildlife preserves are almost dead. If you read the book, The Future of Life by Edward O. Wilson, a world famous naturalist with over a hundred awards in scientific achievement, he shows how human beings themselves have killed more species in the shortest time than any other threat that's hit this planet except a mass extinction. Right. When you look at what we know about the damaging use of fossil fuels and the mountain of evidence on that and the fact that we don't need to keep using it, but the people that make trillions of dollars off it or keeping us using it we're not participating in taking care of the garden that gives us all the ability to live and have these experiences because we're being distracted by um illusions right materialism and yes yeah, scientific materialism and consumerism the myth of our day is consumerism and it's not sustainable because no. The consumerist myth, which was generated by corporate owners and companies to make money, created the illusion that if you're not happy, then you buy something to make yourself feel better. And it also created a, a social rank system that says if you drive this kind of car, wear these kind of clothes, this kind of jewelry, that you are one of the special ones <laughs> to be honored and worship. So we, you know. <laughs> Here in California, you can drive by any apartment building where people can't afford to buy their own house, 
and find Tesla. 50, 60, and seventy thousand dollar cars littering the parking lot, <laughs> and you'd think you were at some kind of a grand uh, opening or, or or the the uh, uh, the 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 what do you call it the awards for the movie stars and the the Oscars, the yeah. Oscars or something, right? right? But right. it's a it's a place where people are making thirty five thousand right. dollars a year and spending every penny they got on the illusions of success. Exactly. So people have been so brainwashed into the illusion of success, the illusion of education, and the illusion of living well, that they've completely lost touch with where their food comes from, how nature works, our part in it, and our responsibility to nature. So the beauty of this is, is that we're now facing a situation where our bodies are being taken over. We're going to be forced into mandatory vaccinations, mandatory chipping. We're going to be in an invisible jail cell. And that's only going to go on for so long before people like you and I, who have a sense of self and a sense of sovereignty, yep. say that's enough of this shit. Right. And that right there is going to trigger a massive uprising. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the optimized tribe with us navy seal michael jaco and i every monday night at 6 p.m pacific standard time there is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that michael and i can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness there isn't a single group online with two dudes like michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. So how far are we away from that? And let me ask you, because I love the law of one and the, the harvest aspect, because obviously you can go to any ancient text or you know, even biblical scripture and they talk about the wheat and the tares. I mean, Paul, where are we right now on a timeline horizon or a timeline perspective to really manifesting that reality? Because I mean, you're, you, everything you said is very, very eloquently and eloquently stated. And I agree with literally all of it. I mean, it's just one giant polarity war. Yeah. You know, what, what do we do as sovereign, empowered, conscious, aware beings to not allow this to continue and where are we on that timeline well now you're gonna open pandora's box yep i told you that i would i'm excited look you ever had a dream that scared you well, i have no fear but of course i've had nightmares good and when you're in it, it was real, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. If you study quantum physics. Heavily. Then it's very, very clear from the most heavily tested scientific theory ever produced by a man that there is nothing until you observe it. Exactly. Spooky. Distant. Which means that you're projecting your own programmed reality onto the scene of the world. And what you see in the world is based on what you perceive you're supposed to see, Correct. which is exactly the illusion being used. Have you seen the documentary um, on Netflix called Social Dilemma? I have. Yes. Okay, so there you go. Who are they interviewing? The very guys that built the technology. And what are they saying? Oh my God, it backfired. We had no idea this was going to happen. Right. And what did the key guys that started this stuff say? We will not allow our children to use social Amazing. media. It's forbidden. Right. And they invented it. Why? Uh, because it creates an illusion that if repeated becomes a reality that you get trapped in and cannot disengage yourself from. And there we are right now. So wh what I'm saying to you is that for me, 
if I didn't have a television or a phone or a computer, I would not know COVID was even going on out right, here. Exactly. Um, our neighbors around here don't wear masks. They all too think it's bullshit. When the whole thing was going on, they were sending texts on our neighboring app saying, Oh, come on over. We'll pour you a drink. You know, the, the, they, they knew it was an illusion. So I don't really have a problem with the illusion until it starts impinging upon my children and, and my personal sovereignty and my freedom of speech and my ability to be a citizen in what is supposed to be a democracy. Yeah, supposed okay? to be. So what I'm saying is, is that we either have to wake up to the fact that if we shut off all our televisions and phones, and stop watching the news within about three days, people will stop buying into the illusion because it usually takes about three days of, of abstinence from an illusion before your mind starts to question if it was real or not. Right. I'll tell you a little story about that. I studied Osho's teachings extensively. I spent five years studying. I own the entire Osho library. I've got nice. almost 800 pages of handwritten notes. Nice. And I have every lecture that was recorded by Osho for his students uh, that you could buy, which is about 500 hours. In a, and it's all on audio cassette because I Beautiful. bought it years and years ago. So for five years, every day I, when I worked out, I studied Osho's lectures and, and read his books. And now I'm not a, an Osho lover or anything. I just found him very interesting. And he was very uh, skilled in, in Eastern philosophy. So it was kind of like a review of Eastern philosophy sure, for me. Sure. But when it came to things like diet and his belief around sexual practices, I, you know, he, he, for example, had a strong dislike of lesbians and gays and anybody like that, which I thought was completely just out of character for a man who was supposed to be a God man. But one of the things that Osho talks about is the power of a thought form. And I've studied thought forms intensively. An example of a thought form is believing Jesus is the only begotten savior when there's not one shred of evidence that Jesus objectively that Jesus lived. Right. And I have nothing against Jesus. I think You're that's right. great to the right. degree that you can apply the teachings of Jesus honestly, then you're a good human being, Absolutely. but you could do the same thing with the teachings of Confucius, the teachings of Lao Tzu. You could do right. the same things with the authentic teachings of Muhammad. It doesn't right. matter. It's, it's not the lack of, of real teachings, all the uh, corporate religion that hijacks it. So a thought form is any image that people keep putting energy into. Right. So look at COVID. Right. We don't even know if it's real. No one's ever seen the virus. We've just been told it exists. There's no real test for it. Exactly. So you get millions of people pumping energy into it, and then right. it takes on a psychic energy of its own, sure. and it becomes a living entity. Right. It's like okay. an egregore. Yeah. Literally. It is an egregore, yeah. 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 It's exactly what incredible. It is. Okay. So Osho tells a very interesting story. He says one of his students kept pestering him, about this famous meditation master who was a guru that he wanted Osho to meet. Now, this guy that he brought to him was a worshiper, I believe, of, of Kali, the Hindu I, goddess Kali. Sure, sure. And it's been years since I said it, but he was the worshiper of a female deity. And the guy would not stop talking about this female deity, this guru. That, sure. And Osho let him stay with him in his own house, right? Osho got so irritated by this, he said, you know, this is all just a thought form. It's not even real. And the guy got really emotionally upset. So Osho said, I will prove it to you. If you believe this deity you keep praying to is real, then I ch challenge you to three days of not saying a word about or to that deity. And this man would say to Osho that she appears inside of him and talks to him and guides him and directs him. So he said, then don't say a word. Don't pray to her for three days and I'm going to watch you. Three days later, the man got terribly upset because now she wasn't appearing to him anymore and his connection was gone. Why? Because it took 72 hours of not energizing the thought form for, for it to de-energize in him enough 
that he now had to go back into his practice of re-energizing the illusion, right? So here's my question for you. What would happen if we had a massive power outage? Nobody could use their televisions or their phones and they weren't being constantly told to be afraid and, and that they got to wear a mask and social distance. Would they go to the beach and start just living normally? Would they start congregating and saying, hey, what's going on? They would forget all about it within about three days and the world would start being normal again and people would become in touch with reality because to be in touch with reality, I've got to go talk to Jay to know what's going on in Jay's life and Jay has to talk to Paul because if Jay reads what's going on on Instagram or on Twitter, <laughs> on Facebook, he doesn't really know if it's true, oh. right? Okay, so we have lost touch with reality and it's been programmed into us to believe that what we see as an image is reality. Right. But if you study Jungian psychology, Jung was a master of this stuff. Jung says you must understand that an image is a complete experience. Right. So when you're exposed to images, the mirror neurons in your mind actually recapitulate the image inside of you. So if you see an image of somebody that's just flown through the windshield of their car and they're laying in the road bleeding, you don't get a smile on your face. Your whole body cringes exactly. because your mirror neurons empathize with that. Right. So what people don't realize is that they have achieved a level of subliminal programming that is so high. They outlawed subliminal pro, uh, uh, marketing on television probably 30 years ago. Right. 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 But now they've mastered it to the point that people don't even realize it's being used against exactly. them. Exactly. And people also don't know that photons have an almost infinite capacity to carry information. Right. So when you're looking at an image, you're only seeing what they want you to see. So the highest levels of magic are being used to create illusions. The point I'm making is if I'm looking at a picture of Jay, I can't really know for sure if that's Jay. Right. If I go stand in front of Jay and shake his hand and give him a hug, I know it's Jay. That's I know his mannerisms. True. I know his face. I know how his hand feels. I know how he hugs. I know his sound of his voice. You know, and, and the way I describe this to my students is this. I see if you were watching a video, like a movie, and you saw two people fighting and one of them reached down and grabbed a handful of cow shit and threw it in someone else's face and it went right into their mouth. If you pay attention to what's happening on the inside of you, what taste do you have in your mouth? Everyone says, oh my God, shit. What smell do you smell? Shit. Isn't that interesting? Because there's no taste and no smell coming through your television, but your brain produces those because an image is a complete experience that the brain reproduces. You're looking at me right now and it looks like I'm over here, but the right. truth of the matter is I'm inside your head. Yep. Your yep. eyes are taking nothing but waves of frequency and right. converting them into a signal and then That's manufacturing right. a picture within your visual cortex, which you actually believe is real. Okay. So the point that I'm making is we are now being put in jail by images right and believing them because we've been conditioned to believe images and the russians are famous for using web-based misinformation to create dissonance they're the masters of hacking their well good research shows they were in bed with donald trump and probably still are and now probably biden for all i know <laughs> but you see and that's the other problem. Our political system is no longer a political system. No. We don't have a government. We have a corporate headquarters. Right. Okay. Adam Smith, known to be the first real economist in right. the United States, warned. I've studied his biography. He yeah, warned the very hand. Yeah. He warned very clearly. He said, any time I was in any government meetings where business owners were there. All they talked about was how to get more money out of people with no concern for their well-being or what kind of problems it caused them. Yep. 
He said, you should never let business or corporations get involved in politics, nor should you let religious leaders involved right. because it takes democracy into some kind of a railroaded agenda that is for that person's or that small group of people's specific interests. We have completely and utterly obliterated what government's for. Right. Lao Tzu says government is for the people, by the people, and any problem in government is a reflection of the people. Right. Well, Lao Tzu's right. What am I really saying? I'm saying that what we've got going on right now is a mirror of our shadow. Right. And it is the result of our complacency and our allowing ourselves to be numb, drugged, deluded, and programmed into relinquishing our adult responsibilities for ourselves, our families, our welfare, and the planet to the hands of the magicians that have us under a spell. Right. And all it would take is 72 hours with no electricity to wipe it out. Now, the question is, how many people have the discipline to not look at television, phones, and media for three days? That would be so amazing to go into nature and just be in nature. Joseph Campbell said very clearly, if you want to know who your God is, ask what you cannot do without for two or three days. Right. Now right. you know. You take most people's phones away, they'll freak out, just like they showed in the Social Dilemma documentary. That woman's daughter could not be without her phone for about 10 minutes, and she yeah. smashed her mother's little security jar with a uh, hammer. Then she challenged her son to a one-week fast. He didn't make it but three or four days. Yep. Three days, I think, before he stole the phone back. Yep. And all it was was a text from a girl that pushed him over the edge. <laughs> right? We have people whose entire sense of self is based on other people's likes or dislikes in social media. Incredible, dude. Okay? Incredible. So when you understand that consciousness is really based largely on imagery... And when you look at the research on the human mind, we start processing images, some researchers say as early as in the womb, and we process images well before we even have language. And images not, listen, you know the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, an archetype is worth millions of pictures. Yeah. Every successful movie in Hollywood is built on the hero's journey system of archetypes. We are now facing an archetypal villain, and we have the choice to slay the dragon or be an eaten by an invisible dragon. In the book, Oneness versus the 1% 1 Von Donna Shiva clearly shows it's less, far less than 1% of the people in the world. In fact, it's about eight billionaires that are pulling all the strings on everybody and doing what they've been doing for centuries, except now they have this technology to do it better and faster because they can't afford to start wars because too many people have weapons that will level the playing field and kill us all. So they've resorted to an invisible war against their own people because it's highly profitable. So the, the reality of it is it's time for us to wake up, grow up. As Ken Wilber says, wake up, clean up, grow up, and show up and start being more responsible, demanding morality in science. Science has completely become immoral. It yeah. invents nuclear bombs. It invents microwave ovens. It invents drugs that kill people. It's schmeyens. It, it takes no <laughs> responsibility, and it's not even science. When I interviewed no. Irvin Laszlo on my podcast, he said, no, Paul, you got to understand something. These are not scientists. Right. They're technicians exactly. that are hired by corporations and promoted as scientists. Right. No real scientist would ever do that. Yeah. Well, they're, and, and two, they're all now, not all, but the majority of them are godless, right? They're 100%. There is no God figure. There is no, you know, beyond the veil movement. This is all empirical, Paul. It can all be proven. Okay, good. And I will show you exactly how Carl Jung would address that. He would say to you, Jay, everything that you perceive to be objective is only validated by your psyche. Mm -hmm. What is it and where is it? 
you measure something, you tell me it's a foot long. And I say, okay, good. The only thing that you have to validate that that's a foot long is a psyche, which is an illusory form of consciousness within your head that has no location. And it's based on a social agreement that social an inch agreement. is this many millimeters <laughs> and, and this. And so we all agree that an inch is an inch and a dollar right. is a dollar. Right. And a gay person's a gay person. But the point that I'm making is what we call objective reality is totally subjective. And what science calls the beginning of the universe, a big thing, is a mystery that they cannot solve. So the entire foundation of materialistic cosmology and scientific materialism is built on something that's absolutely in the domain of religion right. and metaphysics. Right. But they pretend that it's objectively real. And they deny the subjective, they deny the metaphysical, they deny the spiritual. And so I've said to many of these people in my classes and lectures all over the world, I say, okay, so what you're telling me, if I'm hearing you right, if it can't be weighed and measured, it doesn't exist. And they say, <laughs> yes. And I say, I have a question for you. Are you married? Yes. Do you love your wife? Yes. Do you love your children? Yes. Do you love family members? Do you have friends that you love? Yes. Okay, good. How do you weigh and measure love? And what would your life be like without it? And they just shut right up. I say, okay, good. You're playing a dangerous game with yourself. You think if it can't be weighed and measured, it's not real. And guys like me that practice remote viewing, astral travel, and believe not in a religious God, but in a source that is so beyond human comprehension that to even try to describe what it wants or needs is only an illusion that you're buying into in a game you're playing with yourself. But the point I'm making is Jung addressed this thoroughly and quantum physics shows it. Right. If you're doing a double slit experiment and you look at it, you get particles. Exactly. But if you're not looking, you get waves. What is a wave? Right. A non-local reality. What is an atom? 99.999 to the six decimal point emptiness. Right. Okay. So uh, all the greatest quantum physicists in the world have told us that matter is actually an illusion. Right. And what is it, what is it that we're looking at it with? A psyche. Exactly. And so here I say to people, they say, well, yeah, but that's, that's not objective. So I say, okay, good. If you're in a dream, I say, have any of you ever had a, a, an orgasm in a dream? Lots of people have. I have. Of course. Right? I say, well, good. Who were you having sex with? <laughs> then they describe who it was in great detail. How did her boobs feel? Oh, my God. I ask questions. Oh, good. So you see, it was just as real as here. But right. you were completely unconscious. Right. You were dreaming. And when you astral travel, you're in your astral body, which is made of light. Sure. And you have a body. You can touch your own hands, your own face. You know where your feet are at. You can see them. You can touch other things. The point is, is that when your consciousness is at a higher vibrational level, everything's just as material there as it is here. Right. As an, a remote viewer, I can travel to the moon or the sun and walk around just like I can here. And it, to me, it feels like I've got a body double, but it's yeah. a body made of light. But when you're in that body of light, it's more material than the psyche so it seems material so you see the reality that science hard science tells us is so mysterious and so magical that the common mind will not buy into it even though it's the most objective form of science ever defined it's sure. far more objective than newtonian physics right and it's being used against us because the number one application of quantum physics is digital electrical technologies. No shit. And what's it doing? Creating an observer effect and an illusion that you're total buying illusion. into. Fucking total illusion. Incredible. See, tonight when you go to sleep, you'll go into deep dreamless sleep. And if I walk up to you and say, Jay, are you worried about COVID? You won't even respond. Right. I could cut your throat and you wouldn't even know it. Right. So the reality of it is we leave the illusion every night. That's right. And we That's come right. back. So what are we doing? We've all created an illusion together, 
collectively to prod us and poke us to wake up and take responsibility for the power of our mind and become adults and stop letting people make the decisions for ourselves that we should be responsible for instead of eating ice cream and staring at television screens, 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 get the hell out in the street and say, I won't put up with this shit. Well, are you motivated that it's going to happen in our lifetime or do you think we have to go? Hey, I got news for you, pal. You know who David Suzuki is? No, I don't. The famous uh, biologist from Canada? Not familiar. Oh, David Suzuki. He's, he's an old man now, but he, he used to have a show on, on Canadian television and on BBC. He's a world famous biologist. You should just search him on Google. Okay. He's a highly respected, highly intelligent human being. Probably 10 or 12 years ago, because of his concerns, he's an expert at nature, right? He was very concerned about how rapidly we're dis- we were destroying the entire planet. So he calculated the available resources left on the planet. Okay, I am familiar with this guy now. Okay, that I, I do know this now. He's okay. a Chinese guy. Oh, no, he's yeah. Japanese. I think he's Japanese. He's yeah. Jap- Japanese. Yeah, Japanese, yeah. And so he calculated the, the amount of resources left on the planet and the rate at which the population was consuming the resources at that time, which there was six point something billion. Now we're up around 7 billion people or more. Right, or more. So what he did was he designed an experiment, which was mind blowing. He used bacteria to represent human beings and he put exactly the amount of food in the Petri dish that was the mathematical correlate to how much resources we have and then monitored how long it took them for them to consume the resources before they all died or went into dormancy as a bacteria, but no food, no life, right? He calculated that humanity is at the 11th hour, 59 minute and 59th second of their existence if we don't make changes immediately because we're going to destroy nature and starve to death. Right. And when you look at the fact, all right in my library, I've got books showing in 1961, scientists calculated that 63% of the arable land, farmable land in this country had been destroyed by commercial farming. Yeah. The average farming family using commercial farming methods destroys 7,000 acres of land per family. Amazing. The chemical industry has destroyed the planet. And by the way, Bill Gates is heavily tied into that industry as well. Of course, big agra. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So research by entomologists that came out a couple of years ago shocked them. An entomologist doing an analysis of bug traffic was shocked when he found out how low bug traffic had gotten in nature. Right. So he set on an alarm and got a bunch of entomologists worldwide to do a worldwide study of bug traffic. They concluded that in the last 50 years, insect traffic has reduced 75%. And they said, this may be Armageddon. Why? Because bugs are the sex organs of this planet. Sure. Steiner said human life depends on two things. And when they reach critical levels, life will cease to exist as you know it. Those two things are bees and trees. Right. No, there are, are no bees, Paul. You can't find them anywhere. They're anymore. dying out. They're almost on the edge of extinction. And we're cutting something like 2 million hectares a day of trees down in the rainforest and logging still all over. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to log at all. If you study the hemp industry, right. we could have been using hemp to make what we call wood, right. paper, clothing, and a myriad of other things. And the wood industry was one of the main reasons that the government got rid of the of marijuana because they were worried that if hemp became a replacement for wood it would shut down one of the biggest industries we have and many other corporations didn't want hemp around we could stop logging and start growing hemp and produce tons of stuff we have all the solutions the same technology that's being used against us we can use to solve the problem we can you, the Great Barrier Reef is almost dead. Yeah. Of only 1% of the water on this planet is consumable by human beings, and there's only a couple places in the world that are not heavily polluted. 
The yeah. entire country of China's waterways are seriously polluted. We have so much estrogens and chemicals in yeah. the water that all over the world, uh, frogs are all becoming female, becoming female and being born with dirt birth defects. So we have been complacent. We've gotten so used to having things just put right in our face, instant gratification, believing that food will always be there. We've gotten so disconnected from the great chain of being that begins with the microorganisms in the soil and goes all the way up to the largest animals and the human beings that we've completely and utterly destroyed it. And a lot of this comes from the whole biblical idea that we're fallen beings and we're here to be punished. And as long as you repent and take Jesus as your savior, then you get to go to heaven. So that people actually think in that Christian mindset that the world is some sort of like a stopover where you repent and then you get to go to heaven. So why the hell bother? It's just a big chunk of rock like a prison yard. So who gives a shit? I actually saw research several years ago. I was investigating this and um, I can't remember the name of the author that, that I was reading at the time, a Canadian author uh, who wrote a shocking powerful book on all this stuff but if her name comes to me i'll tell you but i actually saw research that investigated the 100 most polluting corporations in the world that were doing the most damage to nature and they investigated the board of directors of all these companies and found out that 95 percent of the board of directors of all these companies were christians yeah of course now, don't get me wrong. I have nothing against real Christianity. Right. And to study real Christianity, you've got to study people like Mike Meister Eckhart, St. Sure. Saint, Saint Hildegard, St. Right. Bernard, the mystics that they tried right. to kill. Sure. Right? So we've been indoctrinated into belief systems. Now, there's a function to that. This is something most people don't get. Carl Jung said, all religious systems are designed to protect you from the direct experience of God. Right. So how do you do that? You program illusions into people's heads to stop them from actually doing the real spiritual practices right. that bring you into the realization that you are the world and you are the universe and you are God. Right. We're all that. That's exactly None of us correct. can be here without the entire planet and the entire universe. That's science fact. Right. If you become one, if you have a direct experience of God, it will annihilate your ego. I've had several of them. It's a miracle I'm even here. So what Jung showed is that religious systems are designed to program you with challenging illusions because that puts you in a situation where you have to learn to use your mind. And that's what we're here to do. As I said earlier, we're here to learn to use our mind, to use the powers of creativity inherent in the universe to create things that are beneficial for all of us because that's the nature of love and love is the force that is the primary binding force of the Beautiful. entire universe. Yes. But you can't have free will unless you have evil. You have to have a polarity. Good means nothing without evil. Love right. means nothing without not love. Right. So the religious systems are designed to set us up in a field of polarity where we have demons to face that then through experience, we come to realize that belief system's not bringing me closer to God, not bringing peace, love, and joy in my life. And if you study people like Basil van der Klok's book, if you look at the rates of violence in religious families, it's unbelievably high. Sure. It's shocking. So what you see, is that religions are actually systems that are designed to progress program us with enough polarity that we are forced to learn how to use our minds or suffer the consequences of our delusions right very few people ken wilbur showed 70 percent of the world population is at the traditional level of consciousness development in the structure stages of consciousness right which yes so which means they believe what they read is fact Joseph right. Campbell said, right. whenever you read the Bible and mistake a connotation for a dictation, you're in serious trouble. Right. Shankara, the famous Hindu philosopher sage, said, no man can understand scripture until he's enlightened. 
Exactly. And when he's enlightened, he does not need scripture. <laughs> so what I say to people is, what percentage of the people teaching you in Sunday school and your bishops and your pastors in church are enlightened? Well, research shows that less than 1% of the people on the planet every any given time are truly enlightened. So we've been hook, line, and sinker sold all these religious ideas by people that don't even have the depth wisdom and connection to true spirituality even understand what those scriptures mean right. which sets up a field of tension or a dialectic which thought has to have you have to have a dialectic to think so we're actually in a point now where we are face to face with the truth of how we've been programmed to right. use our minds and if we do not get clear on what reality is and what sustains ourselves? all of us will call the world the dream board. Will we all come to live out our dreams, play, and learn the truth of ourselves? Right. The dream board has to have food, has to have water, has to have living soil, and has to have clean air. I tell people all the time, if you're worried about COVID or any of this other shit, you are not paying attention to the real issues, and they don't want you paying attention to them. Because people like Trump and Gates and others use these smoke screens to create economical crisis, to force you to let go of your land and your property. And while you're too busy paying attention to the threat on television, people like Trump are releasing nature preserves to large corporations, taking away the Environmental Protection Agency, wiping out the whales, the dolphins, and the entire ocean, all for money. So we're at a time right now where we have a very, very little time left before we get clear that what we need to be focused on is taking care of the planet, taking care of the oceans, taking care of the water, taking care of all the resources that make the game board available for all of us, or we all have to face the consequences of what we've chosen consciously or unconsciously and choosing not to choose is choosing. Right. I tell people, if, and, and many of my students say, well, how is that so? I say, oh, that's easy. Next time your car payment bill comes in, don't pay it. Just choose not to do anything. Try that for about three months, and one day you'll look out the window and see oh. your car being towed away. Choose not to pay your rent or your mortgage payment, and just choose not to choose, and you'll see you've made a very powerful choice. Right. We have been very carefully brought into hypnosis and distracted from what's real and what's tangible because the only true value on this planet is tangible resources. Money is an illusion. Right. Success is an illusion. Fame is illusion. Right. We have a world full of people with plastic bodies now. <laughs> so boobs are illusions. I remember the first time I was in Gold's Gym, I had to go there to be, meet somebody oh, maybe five years ago, and this guy was walking toward me, and I looked at him, I go, what the hell? This guy's muscles are not even real. He had fake abdominals, fake chest muscles. He turned around and walked the other way. His calves didn't even move. He had fake calves. I'm like, we got women with fake lips, fake everything, right. boobs, asses. I mean, we have lost touch with reality. Right. And you know, the, the paradox is if you lose touch with reality, you don't know what's happening. And if you don't know, imagine being the pilot of a 747 that's out of touch with reality or the <laughs> captain of a ship with a, a, a cruise ship with 5,000 people that fell asleep smoking pot and doesn't know there's a, a, a tidal wave coming or a, or a tornado tsunami. or, or yeah. a tsunami. And he's yeah. like, oh, no big deal. Because he you know, so the point is, we all have to uh, become adults now. We've got to become adults, and we've got to be able to differentiate illusions from reality, and we've got to focus our awareness on what we all have to take care of, because our life depends on the earth, it depends on the water, it depends on the air, and it depends on us learning to share resources with each other. And we've got to realize that all the lines written on a piece of paper called a map are just illusions that we created. And we spend trillions of dollars protecting lines written on paper. Insane. If we took our militaries right now and turned them against the real threat, we would police the ineffective use and illegal use 
of all internet-based and electronic technologies. We would have them out cleaning up the oceans. We would have all dangerous chemical companies shut down. We would use the power of the military to plant trees, reforestation projects, water cleaning. If they put the technology and the effort they use to create death machines, to create a life machine, we would be fine in 10 years. We would turn this whole place back to a safe place. We've got to rehabilitate our education systems. We've got to get up to speed with current science. We've got to teach people that the same way you use quantum physics to create an illusion by video, the same principles are what's working in your head. Exactly. And the same thing Rudolf Steiner said, man will continue to invent technologies outside of himself until he either destroys the world or realizes that everything he's made is a copy of a more advanced technology within himself. Right. We have to go in now. I and my father are one. I and my father are one. Anything I can do, you can do better. Lift the stone and I will be there. Split the wood and I will be there. What does that mean? God is everything and everywhere. And you don't need a church. <laughs> right. And Isaiah 45, 7 says, I, the Lord, create the light and the dark, good and evil. Right. I, the Lord, do all these things. Why? Because those are the two polarities of consciousness, and Christians hate that passage so much, the King James Bible was rewritten about 25 right. years ago and changed it. Yep. Okay? So the reality of it is we all generate evil together by participating in it. Creating the thought form. We all participated. Or, or, whoever's participating in COVID is actually making it real. 100%. Right? Right. And what is this all? It all boils down to perception and a psyche that is subjective, not objective. But our experience of life in this perceivably objective reality is utterly dependent upon the health of our soil, the health of our oceans, Beautiful. the health of our waterways, the health of our airways. And anything that threatens those threatens the existence of all of us and our children's future. And if you look at the presentations Jamie Oliver gave all over the world where he took flashcards to elementary schools with common fruits, vegetables, and farm animals mixed with corporate symbols. He showed 50% of school children at about 10 or 11 years of age could not identify wow. common fruits, vegetables, and farm animals, but could identify 100% of corporate symbols. Amazing. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means by telling you something else. Yes. The Christian preachers have a saying, you give me a child right. and I'll give you a preacher. Right. Because the child is highly susceptible to brainwashing. It has no ego yet. Corporations have brainwashed our children so bad they don't have a clue where food comes from or what it is. They think it'll always magically be there. Right. And, but they're wizards with their iPhone. <laughs> Okay, well, when you can eat an iPhone, you'll be okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, man, this has been such an amazing podcast. I really don't want to stop with you, but it's 3.30, and I want to be respectful of your time. Let me just ask yeah. you one last question about all yeah. of that. Yeah. Obviously, I'm in full agreement. Is there going to be a bifurcation of people like you and I who are sovereign, empowered, and free and understand that this is the energy that we give to create the thought forms has to be of a positive nature to protect the soil, to protect the water, to protect the creativity and the courage that people like us have. Is it going to end up being a bifurcation or are we toast? Do you mean a bifurcation of those that are the believers in the illusion and those that aren't? Exactly. Well, what do you mean, Jay? It's already happened. <laughs> Well, why okay, are we having will, the conversation? But, but how will it manifest, you know, in the illusion of the matrix? I mean, will it literally just be eco-conscious communities growing now, you know, off the digital footprint of technology? I mean, I mean, again, I'm just opinion question, but what, how do you see it? Well, that's the only way we're going to survive. Right. But there's always going to be those people that want to stay in the cities that, that are too brainwashed. But the problem is, is that people like Bill Gates are trying to outlaw all that. They're trying to own everything. Right. Bill Gates is trying to make it illegal to have your own seeds, for God's sakes. Right? And interestingly, 
I was, if you listen to my podcast with Leslie Manukian, he's got a seed bank that's massive where he's collecting seeds from all over the world and trying to keep them so no one else can get access to them. Amazing. So he, he's, and look, we have all these people spending billions of dollars to get us to Saturn or to the moon. I'm like, dude, scientists only about 10 years ago, something like 127 scientists got together and put a petition to the United Nations saying for $6 billion, we could restore the soils, clean the oceans, and basically rehab the infrastructure of the planet. Almost every single country in the UN said they could not afford it. Right. Yet our military budget is what, 1.79 oh, trillion a year yeah. or some? George Bush was the president at the time, and he said, the United States can't afford it. I'm like, fuck, we just did a $2 trillion stimulus package for a fucking bogus illusion, goddammit. I'm like, the level of games, but the point I was driving at is that the corporatocracy Beautiful word. is going to try to make it so that people like you and I cannot homestead. They're going to try to impose martial law. They're going to try to keep people like us out of their, because that we're, we are to their business plan what a mystic is to the church's business sure. plan. Sure. And we already know what happens to people like Giordano Bruno and Copernicus and a long string of mystics were burned, maimed, tortured, and destroyed in public to scare the shit out of people. Even Martin Luther almost got killed for his referendum against sure. the church. If you study Martin Luther, he was dead shocked when he was in the Vatican and little naked boys were jumping out of cakes and engaging in practices with yeah. religious higher-ups that were anti-biblical <laughs> and was disgusted with it and tacked his referendum on the door with 95 challenges for the church higher-ups. And it was by the grace of God he didn't get ruined. If you study Rumi and see the things Rumi was Rumi, saying in 12th him. century, the, during hardcore fundamentalist Islam, Rumi said, you cannot get to God until you become a heretic. Why? Because you're never going to know God reading what somebody else wrote on a piece of paper. You're just going to get brainwashed. you got to have your own experience. So the sort of the good news is we either solve this together or we all get to go, answer the riddle what god is together and that either time, way it'll, either way it'll work out okay right that time is closely upon us i, I agree I, I again we're we're creating our reality yes we are collectively yeah but on a positive note when they look at the research on random event generators for example when Princess Diana died or whenever the nine one, any major event where a lot of people focus their attention, right. it actually shifts the random generators, which according to Newtonian physics is impossible to do, but there's tons of research showing that whenever enough people get together with the same common goal or intention, it actually shifts reality. Right. So the point that I'm making is, I don't remember the exact math, but it was something like, I was actually at a conference where one of the presenters talked about this and it's been calculated mathematically because somebody said, how are we going to get enough people to change their viewpoints to actually shift the reality when so many people are lost, confused and in belief systems that are contributing to the destruction of life. And the person said, you don't have to get that many. Right. I think the number he gave was 8 million. If 8 million people lock on to the same objective, the 8 million people focused on the same objective is more powerful than the rest of the six or 7 billion that are confused in, in chaos. So we just need to get enough awareness out there. 100%. And once you have that many people in harmony, the power of those minds will shift the rest of them. Dude. So Hawkins said for every two that reach 400, 450 stage of consciousness, you lift all this, you know, 750,000 of the people below the conscious there you line go. of integrity. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, where that's, we're at. that's where we're at. And, and, and it should make everyone very suspicious and highly concerned when every doctor worth his salt 
who's got a lot of credibility and highly credentialed comes out and tells the truth about what's really going on only right. to disappear off the internet usually within an hour. <laughs> okay. So if you want to know what the truth is, the first thing you do is look for what's being taken down. Yeah. Because that goes against their agenda. So yeah. people like Brian Rose, Sawyer G at Green Med Info, and many others have had to create their own secure platforms right. so that Google and, and people like that couldn't mess with them. And, and uh, you know, what's sad to me is I know a lot of the top podcasters in the world and very few of them will actually tell the truth about what's going on because they're afraid to get shut down. Well, they're going to delete this video as soon as it goes up. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it just depends on how many followers you have. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I have a lot more than is listed, but right now I can't even stream on uh, YouTube. I only have, according to YouTube, 17,000 people subscribed to me, but I think it's a little bit more than that, but it doesn't matter. Listen, I want to be respectful of your time. It's 3.37. Yeah, you, got it, cool. you got another call. Uh, I have tremendous love in my heart for you. This has been literally as amazing as I manifested it to be. Good. We hit on a lot of really good points. I hope that you felt stimulated. You felt. Oh, no. I Look, this is the most important discussion in the world. It is. Who gives a fuck about protein and fat and <laughs> what, what, how you make your fucking biceps bigger or uh, how much money you've got or, you right. know, that's all horseshit. None right. of that matters, right? Well, we're talking about reality. Yes. And a lot of people are so detached from reality, they believe in an invisible ghost. Yeah manufactured by rich people to get stinky rich which is pushing us into a tremendous divide and when you look at countries like brazil and argentina and mexico where that's happened it not only does it lead to mayhem but it brings in a massive undercurrent of a illegal drug culture and right. then you get cartels and whenever a myth is breaking down as jung said that's when isms pop up yeah and that's when you're in big trouble because people that aren't mature enough to think for themselves have to look for a father figure. So you get some wild ass son of a bitches like Hitler creating Nazism yeah. and you get isms. And the next thing you know, you have not only do you have the potential for a civil war, but you have the potential for tremendous infighting between isms. That's why I say, if there's one thing we have to understand, we all need the same things. And that's the resources of this planet. And none of us can survive without them. So we'd be far better off to share resources and shut off the damn digital technology and figure out other ways to communicate with each other that we can control and get back to taking care of what keeps us alive or our kids don't have a snowball's chance in hell. I mean, Paul, beautiful. I mean, again, technology is, that's the key. We have to eliminate and we have to remove ourselves off of it and, you know, create, like I said, eco-friendly, you know, ranges, farms, whatever, agrarian communities, whatever. That's where it's going. Paul, check. Amazing. If people want to work with you, coach with you, where is the best place for them to go? Well, I'm... <laughs> you have so many URLs. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, is that I, I, um, I'm very expensive because I only want to work with people that are highly invested. So most people won't be able to afford me. That's why I've trained thousands of Czech professionals. If someone really wants to coach with me, they'll figure out how to do it. Um, that's your first test. But uh, check institute, C-H-E-K institute.com. Um, our social media site where we have loads of free stuff is Chikiva, C-H-E-K-I-V-A.com. My YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash Paul Check Live, Paul C-H-E-K Live. My podcast where I get into all this stuff very deeply is Living Four, number four, capital D, Living Four D with Paul Check on iTunes, most outlets, or you can go to the Check Institute homepage. There's a podcast tab right there. And have a you, lot of have, amazing have you, discussions. Have you felt any censorship or have you dealt with any censorship yet? Uh, we've had the Institute hacked three times. We've had my PPS Success Mastery program hacked and shut down two or wow. three times. Um, but fortunately I have some very wealthy clients and I was recently informed that if I do get shut down, they will fund the production of a platform that's secure, just like that's Brian awesome, Rose man. had to do. That's awesome.
that's beautiful. That's that's what we need. We're all, we're all there on the edge right now in censorship, man. Again, love in my heart for you. Thank you so you much. Too, I appreciate you. you coming on. I'm going to put this up right away for all the amazing people out there. And I do have a pretty affluent audience. If you have not thought about coaching with Paul and you're looking for literally one of the greatest minds on planet earth. As <laughs> well, evidenced. I'm just a man. Actually, with I wouldn't even sense. say your mind. I wouldn't say your mind. I would say your heart, you know, cause I was yeah. one of the things we didn't talk about is like, you know, as I say now today, and I wanted to talk to you about that, but it's too late now. Cause I'm gonna let you go. But uh, and, and the next time we'll talk about, the difference between believing and knowing and understanding that, you know, a pure heart is what will allow truth to be discerned. Um, but again, let me let you go. Thank you so much for everybody. Please support Paul, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast and remember raise your vibration to optimize your yeah. love creation. 